You should make YouTube videos of teaching. Dio, have you never watched my YouTube, bro? I need to get a haircut, not gonna lie. It's funny, because I have some content to film, guys. So, I don't think there's a break in NDA, but like, I'm doing like a YouTube, just like an ad, just to get some revenue for my YouTube channel. I'm doing like a Squarespace ad and another like hosting ad. So I was like, hey guys, I need to get a haircut before I film these, because they've been like waiting for them. Dude, I've been wanting to add that bonus section to my course for like eight months now. And you know what's, su you know what's super silly, guys? Is it would take me one day to film like two or three videos. So, if I literally just spent three or four days doing the scripting and filming like six videos, I'd have a little bonus section. But I'm so conflicted because I have so much to talk about. So it's kind of an analysis paralysis, if you've heard that term before. So if you've taken my course and you've been expecting a bonus course, I'm sorry guys, it's so silly. But I have to film more content. I'm like, I'm waiting to get a haircut. I'm a little overflowing a little right now. And then I'm gonna trim up the beard. You know, I, the beard is actually pretty easy for me to grow. So I'm gonna go like a half or a third of this length. Just something that is respectable and uh, a little bit more subtle maybe. Did you dye your beard or is it naturally that color? No, yeah, I'm a, I have a ginger beard naturally and blonde hair. You should make YouTube videos of teaching. I do, Lemon CL. Have you never watched my YouTube, bro? Favorite drink? Mm. To be honest, aside from water, I drink mostly water. I don't know, like when I go when I go to In-N-Out, you know what the best drink ever is? Barks Root Beer, I love Barks Root Beer. Um, if I'm having any other kind of caffeine or sugar, I like coffee sometimes. I've been trying to drink less coffee. You know what I really like, which is kind of like a shameless thing? Uh, from Starbucks. I don't like getting coffee from Starbucks really, but then I have found a couple. Like when I'm traveling abroad, if I want like an iced coffee, I'll get like a vanilla latte or something, you know, just you know, it tastes good coffee, caffeine. Uh, but a pink drink. It's an acai and strawberry refresher from Starbucks, but they add coconut. It's pretty good. Favorite CSGO player? I don't know. You know, I like watching the good players always and learning stuff from the new good players. Uh, there's so many good players that it's just fun watching good CS. What are some struggles when physically going to a competition? If you ever travel on like a Monday and you get to London on like a Tuesday or something, you do media day even, and then you have the first match at 9 a.m. on like Wednesday, the double-edged sword. I like it because I feel like I can wake up and put all my energy into it, but some people need to sleep in longer. So if you need to sleep in and get a lot of sleep, it might be tough for you. Uh, other than that, like physically playing at tournaments, like after a while you get good playing on different setups because a lot of these tournament organizers, like the desk height is somewhere always in between like anywhere from adjustable desks now, like ESL has a lot of adjustable desks with the crank. Uh, otherwise, like I think the standard height is like 30 inches. I play on like 27 inches roughly at home, I think. So like you get adjusted to the desk height, you warm up, you get your chair height. Um, they save your configs. Like most major tournament organizers, they ask your manager to send their configs over beforehand. So like, you know, when I was on Cloud9, or the last team I was on, like Dane in or Warden on, on Complexity, right? He'll get all our configs, you send it, you go there, you set up. In 2015, we dealt this, this a lot. What was it? The, uh, what was that monitor brand? Was it ISO? They just had some really ghosty 144 hertz. I say ghosty, I mean like the like delay in MS. And they were the head sponsor, and the comps were running a little shitty, but the FPS was dropping like below 200 in like normal corridors, which a lot of people was like, what is that? But it was dropping to like 130, 140 in like cobble fights and felt really laggy and the monitors were trash. That was that would be one of the harder things to adjust to when you're playing a big tournament because you just lose confidence in your feeling. It'd be like practicing with normal cleats and then all of a sudden you have like cleats with no spikes on them or something. Is it worth lowering the scoped in sensitivity if you are already comfortable with it because of the low DPI in-game sense? Well, it's always relative, so it doesn't matter how low or high your sense is. If you're already comfortable lowering it, uh, some famous software will be Fraud in 1.6. He lowered his zoom sensitivity ratio a little bit. It's got to be a feel thing, dude. You got to feel like you're like it's got to compensate, right? Because if you're over flicking with the op, that's probably just you need to practice flicking with the op. It's a one to one ratio normally, right? So if you want to lower it to overcompensate, do it, but it better work right away. You don't want to practice with a lower zoom sense ratio because it doesn't feel right right away. You only want to tweak a setting if you've put in the amount of practice with a setting and it doesn't feel right. So that's like the same thing I tell people who change res and sense every day. People change their sense and res. What's the right sense for me? What's the right crosser for me? What's the right resolution for me? I don't know. Try one. What's your favorite current hobby? Definitely golf. Golf and cooking are my two favorite. All right, so like right now, you don't like my, my crosser, I would say for like 85% of you. So copy my config, come in here, and change it to one. Be like, okay, gap's still a little big. I can't put it in here. 
Let's go to minus two and a little bit bigger crosshair. Let's go to 1.5. Okay, I like this crosshair. No, let's go two, right? No one's gonna come and be like, let me try 10. It might be my sweet spot, you know? All right, Jordan sensitivity feels a little low, two of 400. I, I'm more of a wrist player, so I need more control with my wrist and I don't have enough sensitivity. I'm going up 2.4, right? And stick with it and practice for two or three weeks before you change to the next one. The only way you should change right away is if you've been playing the game for a while and you just know it's not in the wheelhouse, right? If you go up to three and you've never went over 2.5 over like three years and it's just not helping you, Maybe go down to 2.6 for starters and work from there. See how that feels. How to get out of Gold Nova solo queuing. The thing is, is like, that's just, you're just asking how to get better. So if you want to get out of any rank, build better habits, build more game sense. What is game sense? How do you know what people do? You've done the situation a lot of times. How do you do the situation a lot of times? By fucking playing. And how do you remember what you did when you played? by not looking just at the scoreboard, but reviewing and reflecting the little things. We don't worry about knowing as much as I know. Why did he peek you there? He peeked me there again, and again, and again. Well, let's try to find another reason. Well, it's always the same time of the round I go to peek there. Okay, that's a good, that's a good thing. He's always there at that time. Well, I go there at another time and he's closer to me. Okay, now I verify. He only goes to that spot when I go to that time. If I give him more time, he might move up. Game set. Because now my game set is telling me that if he's not at the back of the fucking corridor in that, at 140 in the round, and I peek at 130 and he's closer, a majority of the time when I do that, he's closer. And when, can I force him to stay passive because I like the fight when he's farther? Well, that's when nades come in or teammates. You need to you need to have this internal process when you play. The way I got better at anything is you have interest in getting better because you have to do more than just play the game. If you just want to get better because you want to impress your friends or whatever and you only show up and deathmatch for like 10 minutes and then competitive every day, it's going to be a little bit slower. I, I sat, I'll go after hockey practice when I was growing up and spend three hours just fucking jumping around on a server by myself, finding nades, finding angles, finding spam spots. If you just heard everything I just said, I'll revert back and I'll say, make sure you're using radar well. Learn how to throw flashes. Learn how to throw flashes for yourself. Oh my goodness. It, when I watch beginners play, Normally I could just see them throw a grenade and I could tell you how many months they've been playing this game. You need to learn how to throw flashes. So if you're just learning how to play the game, um, learn how to throw grenades with right click. Learn how to throw them jumping. Learn how to throw them while you're running like this. Learn how to th throw them off the wall so that they go behind you and you can peek with them. Learn how to just underhand one close and peek with it. Sometimes I see people struggle because they just don't have as good good of mouse movement so it's hard for people because they'll go like this they don't know how to like underhand and then turn really swiftly start with something simple like that guys just go here pretend you're in the scenario you know there's a guy here and you just want to go like this and peek him come back and do it again this and peek him okay you know he's at that angle so this flash probably won't blind that angle right because it's behind the wall you can see it's a good way of knowing it won't blind the flash you shoot it the flash is going to land here, so that's a bad flash. So practice this one, right? Now it's a different flash. I'm going to throw this flash, shoot at them, hide from it, and then chase them down, right? Practice little things like this to learn how to use the nades and build like the mechanics like he's saying, and then game sense. You're going to learn why is this guy standing here. Okay, when you shoot at him, what is he going to do? He's going to fall back. He's either going to come to this angle or he's going to keep falling back. And you're going to get better and better and learn how to counter that, right? Because if you're, you're playing a better player, he might not just fall back, right? Because he knows you're charging along a straight line, he might take that as an opportunity for a free kill and so on and so forth, right? So the better players you play, the more they're going to abuse the small things. But get comfortable with nades and start using your radar more, guys. It's very helpful.